everyone. Welcome to another K6 Office Hours. I am Nicole van der Hooven. And I'm Sima. And today we're joined by the CEO of Grafana, Raj, and the CEO of K6, Robin. Welcome. Yay. Thank you. Hey. Hey, Nicole. Hey, Sam. Nice to be here. Great to have you on. Uh, for, for, before we get started, would you like to just tell the the people watching a little bit about yourself, Raj, since this is your first time on the on the live stream. Sure. Okay. Yeah. My name's Raj Dutt. I'm one of the three co-founders of uh, of Grafana Labs and uh, and the CEO. Um, normally, I'm based in uh, New York City, um, but I've been uh, in Singapore for the last uh, year plus um, to do uh, various circumstances. Um, and yeah, it's just a, a real pleasure to be here. So for, for how long have you uh, have you been working in the Grafana company? How, how long does that date back? Yeah, that goes back to late 2014 when the company started. Um, and, uh, you know, at the time Grafana had just launched as an open source project. It was created by uh, Torkel Odegaard, who's uh, one of the three co-founders of the, the company. And so we, you know, we really didn't have much of a plan or a business, but we were kind of, um, you know, we really wanted to make Grafana sort of super popular um, and continue the trajectory that it was on. And so it's been, uh, it's hard to believe, but it's been, I guess, about seven years, which, uh, yeah, time time certainly has flown by. All right. Robin, do you want to do a quick introduction as well? You've been here before twice, I think, or maybe it's three times even, but uh, for any new newcomers to the channel? Yeah, sure, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, my name is Robin. I'm uh, the CEO of OK6, and uh, I worked worked in the company for, for, for a long time, right, even before we were known as, as K6. And, uh, yeah, I'm based, based in Stockholm. We actually had, because the reason why you're both here for this live stream is that we, we wanted to introduce the CEO of Grafana as we've been acquired by Grafana. Yay! Uh, and uh, uh, thought that it might be good to have you on as well to be able to answer any questions that uh, community users might have about what this means for the future, what plans we have and things like that. Uh, as we expressed in the previous live stream, I think, well, two, was it two live streams ago when Robin was on? Yeah. We, we don't really have any super concrete plans yet, but uh, it's still good to be able to, to you know, uh, be able to open up and let people uh, ask any questions they might have, because because it is a change, right? And, and uh, of course, people have questions and want to know what's what's happening. So Floor is already saying my hat looks awesome. I want to say that my Grafana hat is is on its way, I believe. <laughs> so next time I will absolutely wear my Grafana hat, but that's still. That's still on the way. Um, I'm curious about where the relationship started between K6 and Grafana from your perspective. As Robin already said his his part last time. Sure, Robin. yeah. So the, the story actually goes back a few years ago. Um, one of our one of our developers, uh, Marcus, who's kind of been with the company a long time, um, started using K6 um, to kind of do some load testing on on a Grafana release. I think it was Grafana 5 or Grafana 6. Um, and he actually tweeted about it. So hopefully that tweet will now live in infamy in terms of uh, sort of the history of, uh, of this whole thing. Um, and so we kind of were, were aware of K6, um, you know, for quite a few years. Uh, I think it was like two or three years. Um, we'd used it, uh, used the project um, on and off. Um, I think, uh, Robin and I first started chatting. I think we first had, keep me honest, Robin, but I think we've had our first conversation probably about the same time, like a couple of years ago, right? Um, yeah, I think it was in June, June last year sometime, yeah. June last year? Okay, yeah. And then, uh, you know, obviously the, both Grafana Labs and K6 kind of has a, a pretty strong presence in, in Stockholm, in Sweden. Um, you know, uh, Torkel, um, our, our co-founder and the creator of Grafana is from Stockholm, so we kind of naturally um, built out a Stockholm office early in the history of the company. Um, and so, yeah, um, you know, then kind of uh, over the years, um, as as Grafana Labs grew, we were 
sort of more interested in in making some some acquisitions um, in spaces that were, you know, related to what we're doing. Um, and, uh, you know, we we wrote up a kind of thesis on the kind of companies we were looking for. And, and K6 checked so many of the check boxes of what we were looking for, right? We were looking for companies with an open source model, with a strong, healthy open source community, um, with a team and founders that you know, um, understood the the space, um, you know, a talented team, um, generally pretty uh, developer centric, um, you know, having a business model that, that uh, you know, was all about commercializing uh, and, and monetizing a small percentage of the open source community, um, you know, and so as we started kind of thinking about things more and more, um, we kind of came back to like, oh wait, remember those K six guys? Like maybe maybe it makes sense to try to you know figure out if there's a way that we can work together because there's so many different things that are aligned in what we're doing. And so you know the basic idea was you know together we could do more, right? Like uh, I don't know, I'm not going to use the word synergy because that's a horrible <laughs> you know <laughs> point. But the idea was that you know the the sum could be greater than the parts, right? Definitely. So we have our head of success here, Mark Meyer, in the comments saying, maybe you met, maybe the relationship began in 2015. If I don't know if you both were there at yeah, Velocity. Well, right. Yeah. So I think Rain Tank had a had a booth at Velocity, and we were some people that were at, at Velocity because we had a we had a talk uh, regarding HTTP two at that conference. So I think I think uh, I think we actually did meet back then because I think okay. you were there. I think you were there, Rosh, but it was Wait, so long was that ago. Velocity New York? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Velocity okay, New York. right, right, okay. Yeah. yeah, no, actually, now that I now that I think about it, I think I remember that. But like, to that a two thousand fifteen, such a long time ago, and in two thousand yeah. we, we didn't even know what we whether we had a company or not. So like, the yeah. context of that meeting was probably quite different. You know, like we were still like. Wait, will we ever have any revenue? Like, what what are we doing <laughs> in the company? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. One thing so, that we actually discussed last uh, time Robin was on was, are you even aware that part as part of this acquisition, you've actually bought the IP to a MMORPG as well, which is one of the first <laughs> project products of OK6. Okay, <laughs> so, what are your plans? <laughs> well, we to to pivot, and, and that can be a you know that can be a thing. We can be like the opposite of Slack, where you know we pivot back to an <laughs> MMO. Yeah. With the yeah. excellent name of World Eater, if I'm not mistaken, right? World yeah, Eater. World, world Eater. Yeah, yeah. yeah. World yeah. Eater. Okay. Yeah. Sounds like a culinary travel MMO or <laughs> <laughs> So when when Robin reached out to you or when the conversation started last year, were you immediately like, oh, K6, we should look at acquiring them? Or was it more like, I wonder what we could do? Or did you already have designs on us? <laughs> Uh, that's a good question. Um, I'd like to think that the feeling was mutual, but maybe I, maybe we should ask Robin this because I, I I think there was mutual <laughs> interest. And we, we we saw different areas that we could really complement each other. At least that's my perspective. At least that's what Robin led me to believe at the time. So yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I mean, we had we had basically uh, you know plans that we wanted to work with with uh, Grafana, right? Because as as Raj said, we are quite similar companies. Uh, I mean, sure, we are we are different in terms of size and a number of people, but we have the same foundation in open source, and and we try to monetize open source, and and um, we we work with with our open source communities, etc. So there was lots of commonality, and our product has always been a product that sort of requires or a prerequisite for using our product very well is having uh, access to an observability product or platform, and and being able to turn the results that we generate, which is sort of like black box results into white box results by, by using an observability tool. So we've always been very, very interested in working with observability companies and and uh, Grafana is the the you know the the uh, primary uh, observability company based based on open source. So it's it's like a perfect fit basically for for K6 and what we've always strived to achieve. Yeah, and I actually remember uh, January of last year when I joined the company, because uh, part of me joining the company was to, together with our head of marketing, Pepe, uh, build up the DevRel team and make that something. 
uh, within K6. And one of the first uh, things that Robin mentioned to me when we did our first planning for that for 2020 was that we should collaborate more with with uh, Grafana because it makes so much sense uh, from a uh, like a, a stack or a suite perspective that you'll be able to use them together. Because if you don't use cases cloud, obviously you you will want to have a not another uh, visualization solution or another observability solution, and mm -hmm. Grafana just ticked all the boxes for that. So uh, we, we've actually been using that as part of our community stack or our community offering for for a long time. Um, probably even prior to that, I, I think we've had our Docker Compose file with Grafana as part of it for years. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe yeah, even I mean, since the project launched. Yeah, exactly. Grafana, Grafana as a visualization tool has been part of the open source stack since the beginning, right? So that's mm. that's been a natural sort of component of that stack. Uh, and and then as 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 the sort of uh, uh, you know cloud Grafana cloud as as they've added logging and and tracing support, it's become even an even better sort of complement to using using the the two products together. So Raj, Grafana has been in the observability space and hasn't gone into testing so far, or b at least before K6. Does the acquisition of K6 mean that you want to explore that space? Yeah, so I mean, Grafana itself is a, as a piece of software. Um, there's nothing in Grafana itself that's related to observability. And that's been um, pretty deliberate from, from the founding of the of the project, right? So Grafana Labs as a company, we're pretty focused on, um, you know, selling um, solutions and products within the observability market. But the Grafana open source project is really, you know, we're really trying to build, um, you know, a leading data visualization and, and analysis engine, right? Um, so there's a lot of people using Grafana for all sorts of use cases beyond observability, um, you know, things like bi or sensor data or you know tracking things like the you know spread of covid or the status of their you know home labs or temperatures or scientific even scientific experiments right so um we we view testing as sort of adjacent to observability but certainly part of this soft larger software development life cycle right so there are things in grafana that we will have to do to sort of make grafana really you know, awesome for, you know, uh, the, the, the testing use case, but those things actually make Grafana a better visualization engine and they have applicability to, to other things beyond this, this acquisition, right? Like there's already people who use Grafana to monitor the output of their experiments, right? And so a lot of those features are kind of similar to the features that we'll have to invest in to really make you know this combination hum right so mm -hmm. we're we're definitely looking forward to doing that but for us that's just about making grafana better um you know and uh and there's nothing in grafana that's specific to observability today um and we're really interested in grafana getting into getting into these other use cases yeah i spoke to, really to richie the other day the uh, director of community at grafana and uh, we spoke about uh, uh, chili farming actually because uh, I, I just <laughs> built a a uh, automatic uh, watering system using some microcontrollers for my home, and he was like, "You should get that into Grafana Cloud. You could really use that to chart out the <laughs> humidity of your plants." Right. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, so that's definitely a use case as well. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's uh, one of our. Um, uh, I think it was Ivana at, at Grafana. I forget who it was, but she wrote a really cool blog post about um, using Grafana to like monitor. How she was baking sourdough bread, mm. um, you know. So similar, similar kind of stuff, right? But I mean, it's funny because for that sort of stuff, you really want to look at like, okay, I started this and I stopped this, and like what happened here, rather than you know, kind of like the the continual um, more observability use case. So like, I, I think a lot of these have commonality, um, and so yeah. So Flora from the chat is saying she heard somewhere that you're a pilot. Is that true? Yes, uh, it's it's definitely one of my uh, uh, passions or uh, hobbies or whatever you want to call it. But I haven't I haven't been doing much flying lately. But uh, I really love flying, um, and uh, you know I'm I'm looking forward to to getting back behind uh, the yoke, so to speak. 
Are you allowed to even uh, fly like passenger planes, like uh, Boeing? Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> commercial <laughs> airliner. No, 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 no. Much, much smaller airplanes. Um, yeah, generally like uh, you know, four or six seats is the is the biggest airplanes I fly these days. Um, there are yeah. four people here. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I I think if if Robin, you know, Robin myself, uh, you know, Torkel. Powell, um, you know, maybe uh, Anthony got into our got into a plane that I was flying. Our, our board of directors would have a hard yeah. time. Yeah, <laughs> not just them. <laughs> As an employee of K Six, please don't. <laughs> I, I'm already seeing uh, an idea for an entrance to GrafanaCon where there you go. Raj drives drives an airplane over the venue. And Torkel and Robin uh, parachutes out of the plane down onto stage. Yeah, the, the key word is oh, they'll be parachuting really out of the plane I'm flying, and there'll be <laughs> huge relief as they jump out of the plane. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mikhail is saying from from the chat, office hours in the air. Mm. I'm game. I I was dubious <laughs> until then, but okay, I'm on board. <laughs> So, Raj, it sounds like the acquisition of K6 was more about uh, a tool that would make Grafana better for a variety of use cases rather than a play to get into testing. Is that would that be fair to say? It's it's really it's really both, Nicole. I'd say. I mean, it's okay. the acquisition is about the you know bringing you know amazing team, amazing people um, at K6 into you know a, a, a larger team that's also really passionate and really aligned. Um, it's about getting Grafana Labs um, into a little bit earlier in the software development lifecycle in terms of how we, mm -hmm. you know, talk to our customers. Um, and yeah, it's about pushing pushing Grafana into these these new use cases too, right? Um, and then from the the open source community standpoint, I'd also just mention that um, you know we're really impressed with sort of what K6 has done with the open source community, and we want to we want to align the Grafana Labs communities and the sorry the Grafana communities, I should say. Um, you know, with the K6 communities, right? So, like, we want to make sure that things like Grafana and K6 work really well together. Like, Loki and K6 should work really well together. Um, you know, Tempo and Prometheus and, and all of that, right? So, there's a you know, there, there's a lot of crossover with the, the users of these projects. And we want to have a really great story on the open source and the community side. Okay, so let's say we're five years into the future and this is a question for both of you um how do you what does that future look like a joint k6 grafana one do we have the same roadmap do we have just a unified organizational structure are there any new features that you want to explore but if anyone's watching please don't hold us to this this is all of us speculating <laughs> Five years is such is like a lifetime yeah. in. A, uh, I don't know, Robert, yeah. why, why you why don't you take crack at that one? Well, I would say like yeah, if you're saying five years, I would say yes to all of them. <laughs> that would be the short, <laughs> short and simple answer because yes, as Raj said, like five years, that's an inter an, an eternity, right? It's like it's a, it's a really long time. So yeah, I would say yes, we will likely have very, uh, you know, integrated organizational structures. The products will be very integrated. And, and and yes, I mean, if we haven't launched any new cool, exciting features, <laughs> then I would say something <laughs> is really, really, really off. So, right. so yes. Five years from now, look out for worldeater.com and that's going to be <laughs> yeah. We scrapped everything else and went into gaming instead. The culinary <laughs> MMORPG adventure. <laughs> yeah, eating, eating planets. Yeah. Uh, I think the question that our front e front end team would like to have answered, Robin, is that is whether in five years we would actually have a Nintendo Switch in the office. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's no joke, Raj. Uh, some of some of the people on the team, their reactions to the acquisition was, "Does this mean we get a Nintendo Switch?" How come Robin's been so against a Nintendo Switch? I don't even understand. <laughs> We have a we have I a know, Nintendo right? we have a Nintendo Wii and we said that we would condition buying a, an upgraded console based on you know like closing a major deal. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but does that, did you have an acquisition in mind or was it more of a major? No, major no, deal? it was more of closing like a customer customer right, deal, right? Right. So right. Said, like, once we close <laughs> I, I, I like that goal. I support that goal. So yeah, let's. Uh, you know, the... <laughs> and I mean, what what would we banter about around the lunch table if if we actually bought a Wii uh, a Switch? 
all why, our conversation exactly. topics why, would be gone. <laughs> yeah, why remove this, this conversation topic, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so the, what's the what's the vibe like um, at Grafana Labs? Is it also a switch playing atmosphere or <laughs> what's the culture there? Um, we definitely have a bunch of, of gamers at Grafana Labs. Um, you know, I wouldn't say it's a switch playing atmosphere per se. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that describes uh, describes it. Um, you know, we like you guys were were remote first. Um, you know, we we definitely have uh, you know uh, we, we look at our at our offices as more places to hang out and and kind of have fun and interact rather than rather than work. But um, we're, we're actually taking a, a pretty hard look at whether we'll even have any offices in the future. Um, so, you know, um, yeah, we're, we're still figuring that out, I guess. And, uh, but I'm just really missing having a, having an in-person vibe, to be honest, like the last, uh, the last few years. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm really looking forward to when we can do that again and figure out what the vibe will be look, will look like. I can't even remember what the vibe was cause it seems like <laughs> so long, um, you know, so, um, I'm looking forward to planning that and obviously we'll do it as a, you know, uh, you know, one big, uh, you know, one big team in addition to, you know, sort of per team type events. And, you know, hopefully we'll see people with both uh, K6 hats like you're wearing, Nicole, and Grafana Labs hats. And we can do we can do hat swaps, too. <laughs> yeah, you never got you never got to have the conference you planned in 2020, right? The one in Berlin. Yeah, I yeah. We, I, either 2020 or 2021. It really it really yeah. kind of sucked because we we'd had the conference planned, we had the venue booked and everything. And at the last minute we canceled the conference, made it completely online. And then I said back then that hope to see everyone in 2021 in, in person. <laughs> that also Fingers crossed, uh, uh, pending the Delta, uh, we'll be able to see each other in 2022. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm really keeping my fingers crossed for that. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully there'll be no COVID-22. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, I think last year we all thought, oh, this will blow over in a few months. <laughs> but we'll see. Um, yeah, I think one of, that was one of the things that I was worried about when I first heard about us being acquired by just by anyone, just us being acquired in general, um, was whether or not the remote first philosophy would would change. But I'm I think it's so interesting that Grafana is much bigger than K6, and yet somehow you've managed to to buck that trend of companies um, establishing these hubs, these real life physical office hubs, as they grow. How have you been able to to change that and and keep it remote first? Um. No, that's a really, really good question, Nicole. So, I mean, we started remote first, right? Because um, Torkel was in Stockholm, I was in New York, Anthony was in uh, Australia. So that's about as, you know, horrible from a time zone distribution <laughs> perspective that you can get to start. Um, and then to be honest, as we crossed, um, you know, maybe 50 to 100 people, we started, we started moving away from being remote first. And we started like regressing to being remote friendly. Um, and, you know, we, we established hubs, you know, we had an office in New York, we had an office in, in Stockholm and, you know, there were like these center of masses kind of developing within the company. And, uh, it was a very deliberate decision that we made, um, you know, a few years ago that we'd, we'd double down on being remote first. And, and then we deliberately tried to hire people outside of Stockholm and outside of New York. Right. Because that's like the, the way to do it is you, you try to break those, uh, those, uh, those hubs. Right. And so we did that. And, um, you know, now we're talking about doing it even more extreme and possibly not having any offices uh, mm -hmm. around the world at all, right? Um, and, uh, you know, it's, but it's funny because um, sort of before COVID, um, it was a real recruiting advantage to us, right? We, we'd be able to tell people like, hey, it doesn't matter where you are, like, you know, come work for Grafana Labs, right? Um, and uh, now, like everyone's doing it, so it's like, well, you know, that's normal now. So, uh, but I think it's the future of uh, the future of work, particularly for software companies, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And you know, maybe even more so for for open source software companies. You could you can make that argument. So yeah, we're all in on remote first. And it seems like, uh, judging from the news from 
other or, or the, the the giants uh, in the space uh, it seems like some of them are actually uh, regressioning back to to being office first and I, so I, I think it will remain a competitive advantage because everyone does not seem to be on board on the whole new yeah yeah we'll see first it's interesting how it develops uh, and uh, another thing, I, I really think it's so cool that you actually embrace that philosophy. I mean, geographical proximity is not really that great of an indicator of talent, right? So it, it's uh, it's kind of uh, an advantage to be able to hire all around the world. Yep, it, it's not with it without its challenges, though. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure Robin would. Uh... Would agree in that, like you know, it's you, you. have to be careful as you as you go totally global because you can't, you know, it's 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 tough to to you know manage teams without real planning and and management in different time zones and locations or whatever, so that you know you you can be totally global, right? Um, mm -hmm. So it, that that requires a certain kind of deliberate um, kind of scaling um, and and critical mass and and the right leaders in the right places. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's also there's That's, also lots of like legal legal and compliance things and, mm. and like equity and, and that kind of stuff gets more difficult once you move away from your like home home region, right? So it, it's not it's not like the the world the world is not completely at a at a place where where going sort of fully fully remote is is super easy. Yep. That's I think one of the things I'm I would like to see Kasix learn from Grafana Labs on is that we are also remote first, but still we're pretty heavily weighted towards the European time zones. I think we have now four people in the US, but we don't have anyone in, in Asia or anyone in Australia, not because um you know, obviously there are lots of good people in those areas, but I think being remote is different from having people in a lot of like vastly different time zones. Mm -hmm. Remote is, I think, easier than that. But if you're not on at the same time, there's a it's a whole cultural change. I think, um, Robin, do you, is that something that you see us adopting from Grafana? So yeah, Raj can can. Uh of course, correct me here, but I, I think I think there's there's a natural sort of tendency to at least have people working in similar functions, or people working together quite a lot in at least similar time zones, because it makes collaboration easier. So even if you are, you know, not in the same country, being in the same time zone still facilitates, you know, collaboration. So it's it's harder, and we know that from having had people. We've had people in in Asia. We've had people in San Francisco, for example, and it becomes a little bit harder. You know, uh, when, when people are in different time zones, uh, so I think it's quite natural that you have like a gravitation towards. For example, we have we have basically all engineering in European time zones, right? And we have the go go to market team in US, right? So I think that's quite quite common that you end up in that kind of situation, and then you have to sort of actively work against that if you want to build out sort of like a, a you know like a, a, an SRE readiness across the world because you know an outage can happen outside of European time zones <laughs> if you have all your engineering in, in, in Europe so you need to plan for that kind of thing and I would imagine Grafana has gone through similar kinds of uh, you know thinking uh, in terms of where they where they hire people but when you're, I, yeah, when, yeah, sorry. no but when you're small like like we are right 30 people it's you, you still try to optimize for the collaboration I would say Sorry, Raj, you, you go ahead. Uh, I, I can wait. Yeah, I, I'm just going to agree with Robin. Like that's that that really resonates with me. Um, you know, it was very hard actually for Grafana Labs to like. We now have a pretty uh, big, um, you know, development team for uh, for Grafana and Grafana Cloud um, in the U.S. But you know, for for a long time, that was really central centralized out of Europe. And you know, we'd go a little bit on the east coast of the U.S. and you know, a little bit into Eastern Europe and you know that that was okay but to for us to make the jump to like the west coast of the US that was that took some real planning and it it really you know required a commitment to building up um i'd say the biggest thing was kind of people management in in the US so that you know you could have a team that was you know could work together in a in their own time zone and be managed by by someone in that time zone and and that was how we made that jump but now we have you know, teams for all all projects. Well, almost all projects and products in in you know both both U.S. and Europe. And we're trying to get more into into Asia Asia Pacific. Uh, we don't really do a lot of uh, engineering there. We have a few people in India, but uh, yeah. 
I think it's also easier if you have if you have full teams also, right? So like if you have a team in, in Europe and you have a team on West Coast US, that, that also makes it easier. When you have like single individuals that are way off mm-hmm. time zone wise from the rest of the team, it becomes harder as well. Because the team that are sort of more closely um, located in terms of time zones, they have sort of like an advantage, right? Even if they're not in the same location, they still have the time zone advantage when it comes to collaborating and, and getting things uh, done in terms of communication faster. Yeah, that was basically was that what I was about to say as well. Uh, as your pr- project portfolio, I guess, diversifies uh, into multiple projects, because we only only have two, right? We have Cases Cloud and K6, the OSS product. Uh, in that case, you really have two teams to play with, and it's good for them to be adjacent in terms of time zones. You can't really stretch it that much, but if you have, say, eight or ten different products, it might very well be, from from my layman's perspective, as uh, at least, it might very well be possible to p- place a full project in another time zone to tap into the talent that way, uh, without having all of these handovers that might reduce the the ability to collaborate. Does that yeah, make sense? I, yeah, I would say that that's that that's uh, accurate. I would say it's 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 easier when you're on the higher level. So if you have to like synchronize teams. That probably doesn't have to happen every day, every hour, right? But when you work within a team, you want closer, closer collaboration, uh, probably, probably daily, right? In many cases, for like pull request reviews and, and things like that. So then it makes yeah. makes more sense to have like a, a smaller team, uh, sort of co-located time zone wise, than than uh, sort of when you when you're talking like cross products. Yeah, I, I think that applies to so many different companies. I mean, there's there's the somewhat infamous story of uh, AWS, right? So. Uh, you know, the team that created EC2 was was based in South Africa, right? And, you know, they kind of were working, you know, very tightly within within that geo, and that was what created EC2. But other other AWS, uh, you know, projects and products were were developed in, you know, different regions. So, yeah. But talent is global, right? And I think both both K6 and Grafana Labs kind of really recognize that with our, mm. our remote first policy. But But being truly global takes coordination and, and some scale. Yeah. yeah. Are you able to share any plans for growth? So you've just acquired K6. Is there anything else that's that's on the horizon for um, new new industries that you want to get into or any exciting new features? Just the ones that you can share, by the way. Um, there's definitely some other acquisitions coming um, that we can't really talk about. Um, the you know i mean not not a ton right we have to be very selective so but there's there's maybe a handful that we're we're working on or are either you know almost complete or or getting to that point um you know um we as a company um we're, we're interested in really focusing on observability but also playing both to the left of observability and to the right of observability so um you know obviously with k6 it's a, a little bit to the left or earlier in the observability space earlier in the software development lifecycle space. Um, there's also things around, um, you know, sort of machine learning and AI that we're, you know, working on that is, uh, is coming mm-hmm. down the pipeline. Um, you know, but most of all, we just want to, you know, continue um, growing the team, making sure that we have, you know, some really talented, passionate people through both organic hiring as well as, um, as well as, you know, strategic acquisitions. Um, and, uh, you know, we really believe that sort of open source is gonna is is destined to win. Um, so we're you know very focused on uh, on on that and the community and uh, you know um, I think that the trajectory that we're on as a company right now is uh, is is pretty pretty decent. So we one of the things that we really want to make sure that's not like a product feature, but you know is kind of related to this acquisition topic is you know we care a lot about culture. And I think that that's one of the main things that'll sort of make or break us over the next uh, few years as we kind of, you know, get to, you know, well over a thousand people, right? Um, you know, my, yeah. my previous startup was acquired just like, you know, just like K6. And that was a horrible experience for me. Um, and uh, I want to make sure that, you know, when, you know, when we do acquisitions like this, um, you know, the, the team that gets acquired uh, is empowered to, you know, do do great stuff because that's the reason why these acquisitions normally happen purportedly. But then you look at it statistically, and it's really screwed up because sort of statistically, most acquisitions actually like destroy shareholder value. 
you know, um, like it's it's just a fact of of M and A, and I, I think that's that's ridiculous, right? But it's true, um, and so you know, I think you have to be really deliberate um, on that. So I don't know. That's just some comments from me. I think that makes sense. I was part of an acquisition a, a couple of years ago as well, and in that case, we had a s super talented team that was were doing really really great uh, stuff within the space, right? So uh, once we got acquired. The company that actually acquired us, they didn't really think of it as acquiring a team of talented individuals, as you say, Raj, uh, but but they rather thought of it as getting access to our uh, to our uh, customer data. So they basically bought the company, mm -hmm. took all the customer data, and dismantled the company for parts, uh, letting go of everyone that worked within that company, making it such a successful one uh, prior to the merger or the acquisition. Uh, and in that case, I, I would say that they paid a huge overprice for what they actually got in terms of customer leads. Uh, but who knows? Yeah. Maybe it was lucrative for them. Uh, I, I don't ac actually have the the. I don't know. Yeah, I, I think that happens all too often. To be is is my perspective, Sam, and it, it seems really stupid uh, when when the, the fact that it, that sort of thing happens so often, but it does. And I think uh, I think it's easy to. I don't know, think about these acquisitions in terms of spreadsheets rather than people. You know what I mean? Um, and maybe maybe that's part of the reason why. My experience was not as bad as, as yours, Sime, but I have also been part of an acquisition. Um, I believe that the intention was still to, to really, I think they had good intentions of folding the team into the larger team. But you hit the nail on the head earlier when you said that it's all about the culture, Raj, because I think Grafana has 400 plus people and K6 has 30 plus, and you're talking about more than a thousand, regardless of the culture that you had at when you were at 400, it's going, whatever comes out on the other side is, is going to be different in some way. Um, so it's, there's still an element of, I guess we should still be concerned about how we're going to maintain the culture, right? Yeah. Yeah. And how the culture evolves, right? Because you just can't have, you, I mean, obviously it's not going to be the same when you're, you know, it shouldn't be the same. Uh, you're, you're actually probably doing something wrong if it's exactly the same. Yeah. <laughs> um, right? I mean, it's nostalgic to say that it should be exactly the same, but it, it just can't. Um, but yeah, like to control the evolution of it, right? And, uh, yeah, that's really that's really challenging, um, and it's not it's not defined by what you put in a slide deck or or what you want it to be. It's defined on you know how 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 you kind of actually you know run the day to day and how you incentivize people and how you treat people and how you reward success and how you handle failure. Right? I think that's the that's what that's what matters. So um, from what we can see, we really you know we we, we obviously we we weren't inside the house with k6 but what what we could see looking in from the outside at least is you know uh k6 has many many positive attributes to its culture right so it's about finding the right you know mixture of uh you know grafana labs and k6 to to be better together and uh that's one of the reasons why we wanted to have k6 as a autonomous um company within grafana labs because it's not like we feel that there's a lot to that must be fixed, right? It's not like it's like, oh, if you know, we're buying K6, and if we could only change everything that they're doing and fix all their <laughs> problems, they could, you know, it's like, oh, it's like they seem to be doing pretty, pretty well. Like, let's let's not suffocate them. Let's, but you know, over time, let's figure out how we can work together. But there's no yeah. no rush on that, right? Yeah, I, I think you hit the nail on the head the other day. I don't remember if it was on the Grafana Con keynote or if it was in an internal meeting. And it's not a direct quote, so don't hold. Hold it against Raj, I guess, but uh, you, you mentioned something about uh, being very careful not to love the bird so much that you suffocate it by just holding it so tight, right? And uh, that really, right. really makes sense uh, in in this situation to me. Yeah, that, that's what happened in my last company, and the the CEO who acquired us made that analogy to me after three years in a form of apology of what happened. So that's my new mm -hmm. analogy. It's like, yeah, we just hugged you so tight and we squeezed you, and then we we're like, oh. We killed you. So, sorry. Oh, oh well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I also really love that there's um, a lot of 
I guess, comparisons to um, relationships that have been drawn in regard to the acquisition. And I, I think that's one of the reasons why I'm as optimistic as I am about the future of these two companies is because it wasn't just Grafana Labs coming and throwing a bunch of money in our face. And, you know, there was no desperation on our end to take that money. We were profitable. Grafana's profitable um, or doing, doing well. Um, and when it comes from a place of th these are two companies that could have kept going separately, but there was a wooing period, like a courtship <laughs> between <laughs> between different members of, of the team. And it was just this mutual respect building up until the point where it just couldn't be denied that there there's a lot of synergy. <laughs> Raj standing outside of Robin's uh, apartment with a boombox boom playing <laughs> Bed of Roses. I think that's the that's the good thing, right? When you when you just yeah. start start talking and and you think fe things feel feel natural, right? Then then um, trying to force things that that don't feel natural. So we got a question from uh, Naveen Kumar, who asks. Uh, are there any K6 competitor who is currently a client of Grafana and what do they feel about this acquisition? Uh, I guess this might be hard to answer on a stream, but uh, uh, <laughs> feel, feel free to decline to, yeah. to, to answer. <laughs> I, I'm not aware of any K6 competitor that's a client of Grafana. Um, you know, um, if there was, they probably wouldn't feel good, I guess. To see <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think we, we have that many uh, direct competitors either, because we've taken such a, a different approach in many, many cases than, than uh, other players in the same space, uh, focusing on developers, focusing on code first and uh, things like that. So may maybe there aren't too much of a competition that could be upset upset by it either yeah and i think this this is a trend right of these of like people wanting to have these platforms that are, that are a little bit wider um you know so i i don't think like if, if if there was a competitor um who's a client of grafana or not a client of grafana i like i think they've got to be sort of realizing that this you know like combining a, a company like K6 with an observability platform like Grafana is sort of like arguably the way that uh, the industry is evolving to anyway, you know, um, sort of like, um, yeah, so I don't know. Um, life is full of competition, some real, some perceived, right? <laughs> yeah. So would you, because I, I think this can be also reversed. I don't think we have any, any competitors to Grafana that are clients of ours necessarily, but we know that a lot of people who use K6 use other observability platforms. Um, and I imagine that, well, I know because I, I've used Grafana and not with K6, um, that there are a lot of load testing tools that are that work really well with Grafana. So for both of you, do you have any intentions of kind of stifling that and pushing people towards this one true way of K6 and Grafana together? So I, I think I think both both companies have, have sort of this, uh, you know, um, interoperability goal, right? And playing well with, with the community and making sure the tools that people use work well together. And and then sort of as, as Raj said, right, it's, it's um, the, the best tools are the tools that will prevail, or or, or uh, paraphrasing, I guess, of what you said, but but to, to that extent, right? So I think I think um, you you know I, I don't think any of the companies, K6 or Grafana Labs, are necessarily you know scared of of the competition or people using both of our tools, right? It's it's uh, pretty natural that people have um, situations where they use multiple multiple vendors. Mm -hmm. And it's about competing and being the best at competing. And then lo long term, as you say, it's probably a lot nicer to, or it, it's probably going to be a lot more successful over time to actually win because your product is so good rather than vendor lock-in and things like that. We've seen that with multiple companies yeah, and I, and that I, have failed because exactly. of that. 
and I like one of the things I like, uh, you know, having talked to, to Raj and others at Grafana is just like uh, long term, long term thinking, right? Like long term capitalism, if you will, uh, where where you're not thinking about sort of the short term and and trash talking your competition, right? It's mm. it's more like it's a it's a competition. We're in the same space. We can talk to each other. You know, our tools can even work work well uh, with each other, and then and then whoever you know wins in the long term wins. Right? It's and I, yeah. and I like that. It's it sort of like keeps it open, open and and um, fair game, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent agree, Robin. And we, you know, like we we really pr prioritize interoperability. But in addition to all the reasons that that Robin mentioned, which hundred percent agree with, it it also allows you in a way to elevate the the conversation that you have with your potential customers, where you know you you really put choice forward and you know make that a key part of your your pitch and and that in a way elevates you to be more of a trusted advisor to your companies mm -hmm. rather than, to your customers rather than just saying like oh it's you, you have to use our you know solution for everything right it's like well that makes sense use that right I mean of course we want to convince people that you know our collective software is the best but if the customer doesn't think so or they they want to use some other vendor um, you know great you know it's it's more important mm -hmm. that that we're part of the conversation and. That we we prioritize interoperability, so I think our approaches to that were were aligned even before the acquisition. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, not going to name any anyone uh, or call out any company, but I remember a story Robin told me from a conference long time ago, <laughs> where they uh, the the competition unnamed competition actually turned off their <laughs> monitors as K six uh, approach. Like, oh, you're not going to be part of this. You can't see what we're doing. Uh, uh, I think that's probably not a good approach. Long -term. at a conference, <laughs> that's that's yeah, at a conference. Yeah, we came up to their booth and they just turned off yeah. everything, saying like, "You're a yeah. competition. We're not going to talk yeah, to you. Yeah. We're not going to show show you our product." And I was like, "Whoa, this is completely right. the opposite way that I would right, run a right. business." <laughs> it's to do that if you signed up for an account, I feel you know yeah. that's like yeah. a little bit understandable. Although I won't agree with that either. But to do that at a conference, that's a whole yeah. other yeah. level. You know? Yeah, it was very anyway. strange. Hey guys, yeah, I actually I have to jump in, a, in a minute or two. I'm sorry, but I'm I think, sure. uh, yeah, okay. Uh, sorry, cool. I didn't no realize worries. you were going to be in Singapore. Thank you no for, for coming on. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was so right. great having you here. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, we'll have you on another time as well uh, to talk yeah, a little bit more as we figure out what's uh, how we can work together in a successful way. And Absolutely. Again, thank you for coming on. It was great. No worries. Yeah, thanks for having me, Sam Nicole. Good seeing you again, Robin. We'll catch up. Yeah, soon. good seeing you. Yeah. Bye bye. bye. Raj. Take care. So that was that was um, really good of him to to come on, even though it's pretty late his time in in Singapore. Um, I was just going to say, too, I am pretty open about the fact that I signed up for a lot of different test tools, testing platforms, and I'm, I don't think of it as, I, I joke about it, but I don't think of it as like spying on the competition or anything. I am a tester. I need to know what's out there, you know, and I think that there's a tendency when you're working for a company to think that everything that we make is so much more awesome than the rest of it. But if you don't go out there uh, and see what other cool ideas other people are doing, then how can you really say it's the best? And that's also kind of the point about the whole open source stance that we're taking, right? That uh, by, by openly sharing what we're doing, uh, we're just creating so much better products all across the board, helping people. Uh, then we can find ways to monetize on, you know, like uh, 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 convenience or effortlessness or, or, or you know, uh, knowledge that we share, for instance, through the uh, performance insights or things like that. That that's completely fair and it's 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 good competition to have, but technology or in. in in case of this actual software, it's so nice to just be able to try to evolve the field together rather than watching your back for anyone stealing your secret sauce, so to speak. Here's a here's a comment from Mark. If a customer chooses one of K6 or Grafana's products, but not the other, we just take that as a chance to gather feedback and improve. Hmm. And so, I, so he's our, our head of customer success. And I, I totally agree with that, that I think that's a philosophy that everybody at K6 agrees with. It sounds like Grafana Labs does too. 
Yeah, I mean, it's it, exactly like Mark says, it's a chance to learn, right? Rather mm -hmm. than try to squeeze your product into the customer's use case that doesn't fit, it's better to learn then. And, and as you learn more and more, you'll realize if there's a missed opportunity, a use case that you might not have thought of, uh, and, and you learn that it, it exists and you can, if you want to, if you see a business opportunity, you can adapt your product to that use case. But but this like, yeah, trying to force sell or badmouth the competition, I don't think that's 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 the right approach. But learning from the competition and also trying their products, I think is helpful because sometimes sometimes the competition does things better than you, right? And, and then you can learn. Definitely. We have another question from Naveen Kumar, who asks, when can we expect a K6 or Grafana certification program? And uh, I, I think we've had this question on the on the show before. And uh, I, I think the answer still stands that we don't have any immediate plans uh, for that, but we're still looking into it uh, and would definitely like to have something like that long term. But but uh, there's there's nothing coming in terms of a certification program for K6 in the immediate fu future. Maybe Robin has a, another stance on that, but that's uh, at least uh, my interpretation of the situation and based on what I'm currently working on, which is not a certification program. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would I would say that we, as as Raj mentioned, also we we didn't take an approach where we tried to figure out everything before the deal, right? And, yeah. and the deal just closed a couple of weeks ago, so it's it's still very early days. So we're still we're still sort of getting to know each other and and figuring out what the best best sort of steps are to to get to where we want to be in in, in sort of a year's time or so. Um, I'm sure something like a certification program will be, will be discussed, but yeah, there there are no sort of immediate mm. things that can be communicated on that front. Yeah, you you won't be able to expect a K6 certification program in in the last couple of months. At least <laughs> that I know for sure. <laughs> yeah. But we, I'm hoping um, that we will have some of the groundwork for for such a certification program. Specifically, um, I know Sim and I in particular are are really looking at, as well as the the, the marketing team, um, we are talking about how to improve our documentation and just give a more guided experience to the documentation than what we currently have. And I guess only when we're all completely satisfied in the documentation or, or reasonably satisfied, I guess, would we think about actually having a formal certification path for it? And for those of you who actually want to have a guided experience and learn K6 hands-on, uh, feel free to have a look at TestCon in Lithuania later this year, because we're actually giving a full day workshop on K6 and not just K6, but open source observability and op open source uh, performance testing there. Uh, so if you would like to get some hands-on training in how to do that, uh, you should have definitely have a look at that because we'll be there and uh, and try to help you to the best of our uh, uh, capabilities to get you started on that. Yeah, testcon.lt. And so Sim and I, I'm helping Sim with this, with a workshop, um, but I'm also speaking about uh, chaos engineering with K6 and Grafana. Um, and Sima, you're, you're also scheduled to talk there too, right? Yeah, uh, about observability in production. And, and those are topics that we we had agreed to before we knew about Grafana, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just goes to show how interests were naturally converging. Yeah. One thing I, I really wanted to ask um, Raj, I didn't get a chance to, is I, I wonder how the Grafanistas are taking it. Um, I guess just news of these newcomers, upstarters <laughs> coming into their 400 plus person company. Um, I, it would have been interesting to, to hear what they think about it. So far, we've only gotten like one on one contact with the Grafanistas. Um, but how do you think? The the K6 team is taking it now, Robin, a few weeks after the last time I asked you. <laughs> uh, 
I think, I think, I mean, given that there's been more time to contemplate, right, on what's happened, I think, uh, in, in general, it's very, very positive, right? We had, mm -hmm. there was some concerns given that, I mean, people had gone through acquisitions before and, and people have, have, have had different experiences of acquisitions. And, and uh, then there's, of course, whenever there's a big change, there's questions, hey, what does this mean? What does this mean for the group, the team, and the company, uh, for me individually? Etc. And I think we 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 all learn, you know, every every day and every week that passes, we we become more used to the idea that that we are now part of a bigger bigger structure, and we learn sort of what the what the um, new sort of policies and things uh, that that will sort of start applying to us and, and stuff like that. So I would say generally generally very very positive. Are you going to remain at the the head of K6 for the foreseeable future still? Or are you kind of um, looking forward to offloading some of the responsibility? No, I mean, we've, we've, we've said that we are not going to change uh, any sort of structure or anything uh, in K6. So we're not going to, we're not going to work to to sort of tightly, tightly integrate the K6 team with with the Grafana teams for the foreseeable future. So, so our structure will sort of remain remain intact, and and our day to day work will sort of remain intact, while we, you know, in parallel figure out together with the Grafana team, um, what steps we want to take, both in terms of, you know, how can we collaborate across different teams, so engineering, marketing, product, etc. And you know what 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 would be the the best sort of joint experience that we can deliver to customers uh, in terms of product. Mm. All right. Think, so sorry, Nicole. Go ahead. I, I was just going to say I think that that's echoed um, in the public forum too. I think most people are very positive about the acquisition. And if anything, they're like pushing for us to move faster and get all these integrations that we we all want up and running and make it like a really slick experience to use um, one tool when we're using the other and, and vice versa. Um, but yeah, it's good to see that it's been received uh, positively as well. Yeah. So, uh, we're running out of time, so I'm uh, going to try to uh, round this up. Uh, as a last thing that I always want to mention when we do this, we are still hiring, and so are Grafana. So have Ooh. a look at our career page as well as the Grafana career page, and have a look at the available opportunities and get in touch in case you want to uh, talk about any of them in, or if you have any questions. We're all happy to answer if you have anything uh, particular you would like to discuss. And even if you don't match any of the current uh, job openings that are up, get in touch anyway if you think you can contribute to the vision that we have. Because we might not have thought about whatever skill you would be able to, to bring to the team. Yeah, and uh, I think it's a good time to <laughs> to be trying to get into one or the other. I mean, getting into K6 is getting into Grafana too. Um, as as Flora saying in the comments, she said, I haven't met a Grafana I don't like, a Grafanista I don't like yet. I'd say the same thing about the, the K6 team. So join us, be one of us. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> we and might I not don't have a switch, say that. but we have cookies. <laughs> <laughs> we have individual switches. <laughs> yeah. And thank you so much, Robin, for coming on the show again. It was a pleasure to have you here. And Thanks, guys. And to speak a bit more about the acquisition. Uh, and uh, do we know who we're having on next time, Nicole? Not, I'm not sure. I'd have to check. Um, but stay tuned. It'll be like a, <laughs> a secret <laughs> thing then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we do. We do have someone already. I'm sorry. This is why calendars were created. Next week, we have uh, Jose, who has, I don't know if he's here now, but he he has been on before. Um, I he, Jose Luis Millas, or I'm sorry, La Torre Millas or something. I'm sorry about your name. It's 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 a long one, uh, but he is going to be speaking. Has spoken once and has two more 
presentation scheduled about K6 and Azure. And so he um, is going to t tell us all about that and why he uses K6. No relationship with K6 at all. So it's always cool to when we get the chance to have a real user on. Um, and his full name is Jose Luis La Torre Mia. Sorry about that. <laughs> So make sure you don't miss that one, because that's going to be a, an exciting one for sure. Uh, and uh, thanks for coming to this office hours. Uh, and if any of you don't, if none of you have anything else in, uh, to say, uh, thank you so much for joining and enjoy your weekend. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. -bye.